<clears throat> I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the things that happened in the Pacific during the war. Uh, get an idea of uh, our Navy, what we did. Uh, starting with de December the 7th, December 7th, 1941, we, our Navy was very, very sparse. We didn't have that many ships. It had some, of these, some ships, some of the, uh, the websites say we had 102 or 902. Some of them say we had over 1,000. But I, I use 902 as, as the, the figure. We, we had 17 battleships. Now, nine of them were in Pearl Harbor. Of those nine battleships that were in Pearl Harbor, we lost two of them, the Arizona and the Oklahoma. <clears throat> the Oklahoma had, been, had capsized. They get, did it back up, they get, get it back up right, get it repaired, but it was never in good enough shape to go out and fight. So we consider it as, as it had been lost. So we, we had, the, we had six aircraft carriers at the beginning of the war. I'll talk about that a little bit later. But those six carriers, we lost four of them in 1942. So for the last part of 1942 and half of 1943, we only had two aircraft carriers operating. So we had uh, 17, 18 heavy cruisers, light cruisers, uh, the destroyers, 121 destroyers, 112 submarines. That, that's what I get here. The total, I can't see it. So yeah. Oh, over here. Yeah, 902. Yeah. The total is we had uh, whatever that that figure. I can't see it that well. Whatever that number is, Mark. What's that number, Mark? 283. 283. Okay, 283, and then. Anyhow, that was our number of active ships. These other, the other number is all the su support ships, the repair ships, the cargo ships, the tankers, the oilers, uh, the cargo, the passengers, you know, the transports. So this is what we started the war with in, in uh, December 7th, 1941. So these are the six aircraft carriers that we had at the beginning of the war. Uh, the, uh, the Lexington, yeah. The Lexington was lost in the, in the Battle of the Coral Sea. The uh, Saratoga survived the war. Yorktown was lost at uh, Midway. The Enterprise survived the war. The Wasp was lost at Guadalcanal. And the Hornet was lost in uh, Santa Cruz. So we ended up, like I said before, we ended up with, with uh, only two aircraft carriers operating for a long time. Uh, you saw a picture before of the, the Wasp, my, my ship. Uh, my, my battle station was back here on, on the aft. This it shows the profile. This, this shows you the, uh, the, like I talked about, the, the eight, uh, the four uh, the gun mount, the twin five-inch gun mounts in, the, in this island structure. Back here, they had two single five-inch guns and our quad 40 mount. On the, on the forward part, they had two single five-inch guns and a, and, a, and a quad 40. Like I said, and this is looking at it from the top. We had three elevators, uh, number, number one elevator, number two, and number three. We call this the deck edge elevator. Now, when the, I talked about the kamikaze. When the kamikaze hit, this is about the position. It, this is not, not a scale but 50 feet off of our starboard bow. Okay, out in the Pacific, they had Task Force 38. 
and, and Task Force 58. Actually, they were the same ships, but they just changed the number when they changed the commander. When Halsey had the command, it was a Task Force 38. When uh, Admiral Mitcher was in charge, it was a Task Force 58. I don't know why, how they did that, but why, but anyhow, they had t two task force with the same, same ships. So within a task, for, task unit, you'd have an aircraft carrier, and, and I'll show you later on how the uh, disposition of the ships. But you had an aircraft carrier, maybe two, two battleships, sometimes maybe three. Later on in the war, as we got more ships out there, uh, this is probably around uh, 1944, but later on we got more ships, more, more battleships showed up, so there would have been more battleships in the group, in the task unit. We had light aircraft carriers. At the beginning of the war, we did not have any light aircraft carriers. Sometimes a light aircraft carrier would be in there with the, with the uh, battleships. And we had heavy cruisers and light cruisers, uh, depending on, on the size of the, the task unit. Then we have the, uh, 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 yeah, they had a, 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 maybe one light carrier, uh, light, uh, heavy cruisers, light cruisers, destroyers. Uh, over here. Yeah. Now, this is the makeup of a, of a task unit. Not typical, but uh, it looks uh, sort of like this. Uh, it, it would vary depending on the, on the need and where the, the, the uh, task unit was assigned that you'd have one, one carrier, two or three battleships, like I said before, uh, one light carrier, a few uh, uh, heavy cruisers, light cruisers. Uh, the difference between the cruisers, you had, wait, a, a task unit, this task unit was like 27 ships. What is that, how many men? 1,900. Yeah, 1,900 men on it. On it, it I'll, I'll get to that later, but anyhow, in the task unit, like Dan had mentioned, the, the carrier is the, so, the focal point, the center. Everything is around it. You, you can see there's, there's concentric circles around here. There's about a thousand yards be, between ships. I had talked about how close we were later on when they had the flyover, but there was about a thousand yards between the ships, fore and aft, so you've got, you've got two, yeah, you've got about 6,000 yards from one side to the other. These are the destroyers are on the screen out here. Now Dan mentioned the destroyers getting a lot of the kamikazes because they were out there. <clears throat> but also, they had what they call a, a picket line, which is outside of this task unit, a task force. <clears throat> They had destroyers out there between the, the task unit and Japanese homeland where the airfields were. <coughs> and they were out there, if they spotted a, a, a Japanese coming in from, the, uh, from their air, airfield towards the task unit, they would radio in and act as, uh, they would vector the fighters in the air into the, uh, they intercept the, uh, the ships, the, uh, the kamikazes that were coming. But a lot of them took took a, took a hit. We we lost. I'll get I'll get to it later. We we lost 104 destroyers in the war. But th this will give you an idea of how the how the ships were all spread out. Now, also take into consideration, that the ships were never really close together. Even the, the task units between the, the task. The task force was made up of three task groups, and within each group was three task units. Now, within the task units, you were spread out over probably a, a 10 square mile area. And I don't know how close the, uh, the other task units would have been, but you just should imagine you've got nine separate task units spread out all over the ocean, which could cover a hundred or more square miles because they're really spread out like crazy. A 
Okay, so this is the makeup of the task force. Task force, you have three task groups, three task units. You have to excuse me because I don't see that well. And I didn't commit to memory. But you'd have 233 ships, 171,000 men. That's a lot of men. An army division is maybe 200,000 people. But anyhow, you've got all these people spread out in a huge area. Okay. Now, this is the whole makeup of all the ships that we had in, during the war. During the war. <clears throat> I won't bother explaining all of them, but you can look at the figures and see how many we started with on December the 7th, 1941, and how many we lost <clears throat> and at the end of the war. Now, remembering that our production, we were building ships like crazy. <clears throat> like, we only started with uh, 11 battle ships. We, we ended up with, what, that 23, whatever? So they were building at the time that we were uh, we were fighting, they were building. A uh, couple of notes of interest. <clears throat> the light cruisers that we lost. One of those light cruisers was the USS Juno. It, it may not mean anything to anybody, but <clears throat> on the Juno were five Sullivan brothers uh, from, I forgot the town, in Iowa, I think. All, all, all five brothers were on the ship on the USS Juno, and when it was lost, they were lost. And it was after that that the Navy Department ch to change their rules so that t brothers could not be on the same ship together. <coughs> now, getting back to the, uh, the USS Arizona, which was lost at Pearl Harbor, you know, they lost about 1,100 men. On the Arizona, there were 37 sets of brothers. And out of those 37 sets of brothers, 23 sets of brothers died. They had three sets of three brothers together. And one of those sets of three brothers died. They also had one father and son set. And both of them died with the, on the Arizona. But they, just a point of information, which doesn't mean anything to anybody except those people who had people out serving on the Arizona. Okay, so that just about sums it up, talking about the, uh, the whole, the, the war is itself, let me make a, a few closing comments. <clears throat> Dan, Dan had mentioned the, uh, the typhoon, uh, it, was, it was really rough for a while, but the, as, as a 19-year-old kid, I went back aft, all the way back aft to the uh, stern of the ship where I could get up into the, uh, up, uh, the, the main deck where I could look outside and I could see the water. And there were times I couldn't even see the top of the waves, they were so high. <clears throat> but we, uh, we ended, like I said, we ended up losing 30 feet of our flight deck on, on both, both sides. Let me think a little bit. Uh, there's something else I need to say. I, I can't think of it. Okay, I, I, I hope that we have given you a pretty good picture of uh, what happened during during the war. The uh, all the the veterans that were here. There's a, a, a yeah. The I, I I have to tell you that, uh, like I said, I, w I was proud to be in the Navy. I was glad. My, my dad, my older brother and I, and, and my younger brother also was in the Navy, but he, he went, my younger brother went in right after the war was over. But at one time, it was my dad, my older brother, and I, myself were in, in the Navy at the same time. I, I think that's about enough. I think the, the whole idea is that we're, we're celebrating the 75th anniversary Okay, there's, there's one thing that I forgot to mention, I can, I can mention it now. 
when the uh, Japanese came into Tokyo Bay to go aboard the USS Missouri to sign the surrender papers, there were maybe a hundred Allied ships in, in Tokyo Bay. A couple of battleships besides the Missouri, a couple of cruisers, some, a couple of submarines. But there were no big fleet aircraft carriers. None of the carriers were, were in Tokyo Bay. And I had my own reasoning, and it's been confirmed by other people who've had the same thought. Admiral Nimitz was the commander in chief of the Pacific Fleet. Admiral Halsey was commander in chief of the third fleet, the carrier task force. Neither commander, neither Admiral Nimitz nor Admiral Halsey trusted the Japanese. So we had an entire carrier task force of a couple hundred ships at sea during the signing of the surrender. We went to battle stations all, all during that September 2nd. We were at battle stations all day long while they were signing the surrender. Now, later on, after I get finished here, you'll see the, uh, the video of the surrender, the signing of the surrender with the Japanese coming aboard the Missouri to sign, sign the papers. So keep that in mind. It was the end of the war. It was a horrific war. Uh, we did our part. So I, I hope you've, you've learned something. hope everything came across to you that the 75 years ago was a long time. But a lot of these memories are stuck indelibly in my memory. There's some things that are that faded away, but basically I remember a lot. I enjoyed it at the time. There were times that it was frightening. I had I had fun at Alameda. I had fun at, for at times on the on the on the wasp. I, I enjoyed my time in the Navy. So like this, like I said, I hope you've learned something about the the war, the part that we played and also the, the surrender. I think that's enough. Thank you, and you'll stick, stick around, you're gonna see the, uh, the video of the actual surrender. Thank you so much for your, your attention. Okay, okay.